Hello and welcome to Midweek Meditations, where we have an opportunity to briefly share with you what God has shared with us. into this series entitled Addicted and we're looking at the power of addictions and this week we decided to look at John the fifth chapter verses two through nine about the parallel by the side of the pool of Bethesda we watch Jesus minister to that brother and bring him out of his situation and that's what we when we talk about addiction we're talking about the fact that Jesus can pull down whatever stronghold is, that is going on in our lives and so we learned a couple of things about this paralytic and his encounter with Jesus. The first thing we learn is that whenever you and I get locked into addiction, we get locked into sin, we have we oftentimes think that that's who we are. We are we are that sin. We are that addiction. But I got good news for you that that's a lie from the devil himself. And anytime, here's my first point, anytime you devalue yourself, that is not the work of God. That's the work of the enemy. You are worth something to God. You are not you are not worth something to God based on your performance, but it's based on your relationship with God. And it's also based on his great love for you, my friend. And I want to pause and tell you that that's the danger of addiction. That's the danger of a cycle of sinfulness. It causes you to think low of yourself. God said, I come to lift you up. I didn't call, come to bring you down. I come to show, show you love. I didn't come to hate on you. And that's what I love about the God that you and I serve. So that's the first thing we learned about this encounter that Jesus had with the man by the pool of Bethesda. Here's the second thing that we learned about Jesus' encounter with this man at the pool of Bethesda. Here's what Je you remember. We oftentimes hear a lot about the question that he asked. He asked the question, do you want to be made whole? And, and that's a powerful question. Sometimes we push that question aside. But I believe Jesus was asking this man something deeper than just, do you want to be able to walk? What Jesus was really asking this man, are you, are you man enough? Are you, do you have enough courage in you to accept the challenge to see yourself as I see you? Yes, that's what Jesus was asking. Do you have the courage to accept the challenge to see yourself as I see you? As you see what Jesus was really asking that man, he knew how long the man had been by the pool of Bethesda. He knew all that he had been through. The man had gotten kind of comfortable being down there. Not only had he gotten comfortable, but he also realized that his life was hopeless. He was moving into areas of despondency and that's where the devil wants to take us in the areas of despondency where we give up all hope but he did not realize that standing over him looking him in the eye was Jesus the Christ who could set him free and so Jesus asked him the question do you want to be made whole I believe Jesus was really asking him do you have the courage to accept the challenge to see yourself as I see you. And then the last thing we learn, the last thing we learn is that oftentimes we try to put action before acceptance. But I found out from that encounter that it is always about acceptance and then action. That brother had to accept the words of Jesus. He had to believe that Jesus meant what he said. And once he accepted the words of Jesus and believed that Jesus meant what he said, you know what happened? He got up off of that mat. He rolled up his mat and he began to walk. Oh, my brothers and sisters, I'm trying to tell somebody right now that healing comes when you take Jesus at his word. Healing comes when you say yes to him. Healing comes when you respond to him in the positive. And that's what I want to pause and tell you as I prepare to close. So many times our identity is caught up in the stuff that we do or the stuff we don't do, what we have or what we don't have. But I want to challenge you that you find your identity in Jesus Christ. Oh, the lover of our soul, the hope that you and I have in Jesus. Can I trust you right now to find your identity in Jesus? I know 
I know, I know that you've been through some difficult experiences. I know that you've had your fair share of ups and downs. You may even be dealing with an addictive behavior right now. That is not you. Uh, that is not you. That's what you've been doing. But I've come to tell you that you are a child of the Most High God. And don't you let anybody rob you of what God has for you. Here's what I want to ask you something as I'm preparing to close. Do you want to be made whole? Ha! Do you want to be made whole? Do you want to come on out of that thing? All you've got to do is accept the words of Jesus that he gives strength to those who are weak. He gives power to those who have no power. And then he re I want to remind you that once he does that, he says, if you stay in here with me, you will walk in peace. That's what I want for you. That's what I want for me. I want you to continue to stay with us as we continue this journey of addicted. We're going to pick up again next weekend. Look at another phase of addicted behavior. But we may start looking at how, what does it look like to be addicted to Jesus? That's what I want to close out by telling you. You and I need to be addicted to Jesus. May God bless and keep you. May it cause his face to shine upon you. And may you have his peace. That's my prayer. God bless till we meet again.